What do you want from us? Inception. Is it possible? Of course not. If you can steal an idea from someone's mind, why can't you plant one there instead? <laughs> That was a clip from Inception, in which stream engineer Dominic Cobb discusses the possibility of implanting a new memory into someone's brain. Pop culture has always been obsessed with the idea of messing with people's minds, but just how close are we to bringing this into reality? Today we're going to take a look at a pioneering technique called Targeted Memory Reactivation, or TMR for short. Although it was discovered in the late 1980s, TMR has recently made a big comeback in the world of memory, rapidly paving the way for our understanding of how memories form, and it has to do with something we all love. Sleep! But before we get into the nuts and bolts of TMR, here's Michael Anjanov, jazz trumpeter, to explain how memory actually works. Let's say I'm chilling on a Monday afternoon, and Bon Jovi calls me up to tell me I have to learn a chart for rehearsal by Wednesday. I have to figure out the chords, the melody, and an entire solo. It's a lot to get under my fingers. While I'm playing, my brain is hard at work, creating new connections called synapses that will later help me remember what I'm experiencing right now. And a memory is born. By the five hour mark, I call it a day, but my brain doesn't shut off. You see, while I'm passed out, my brain finds the tapes of memory it made throughout the day and replays them. That's reactivation. So when Wednesday rolls around, I'm ready to play. You're making a ton of memories throughout the day. The brain simply can't find and reactivate all of them when you sleep. According to the Active System Consolidation Hypothesis, the specific memories reactivated during sleep are selectively chosen by your brain, based on factors like salience, intention, novelty, reward, and instruction. If your memory meets those requirements, it'll be replayed. But what if you wanted to remember something that doesn't quite fit into these categories? Something like vocab words or a new recipe. They might be super important to you, but to your brain, maybe not. That's where this technique of targeted memory reactivation steps in. To get some insight on the topic, we decided to fly over to Ann Arbor, home to the University of Michigan and world-class delis but also Backyard Brains, a startup that builds kits helping people conduct their own experiments in neuroscience. Over the past few months, we've been collaborating with our intern Jude, a neuroscience major, to develop a smartphone app that aids in the process of TMR research. We flagged her down at a TED event where the app was being showcased. We had some questions for her. Questions like, how does TMR work and how is it being used in the field? And most importantly, how exactly can you study for a test during your sleep? We can always think of memory as a muscle that we can strengthen. It's basically taking information that you, you, are, you are experiencing right now in the present and kind of storing it in your brain to be able to have access to that memory in the future. So we can think of TMR as basically the artificial way of the way activation that happens normally in the brain. That stimulus that you get exposed to whenever you are um, forming a memory and storing it. Basically we take the stimulus and we, we try to um, replay that stimulus whether it's auditory for example a sound that you listen to or if it's a smell and we replay that stimulus during your sleep and that's how we are basically we, we want to reactivate memory but in an artificial way we wouldn't want our brain to like just normally do it we want to test it and see if we can enhance it and we can do it on our own you can think of it as, like, as if you're hacking your memory like you you want to choose and you want to decide okay which which memories do I want to like hold on to and have them be like reactivate and like make sure that I still have them for the longer for a longer time and which memories I don't really care about and I just want to like you know I just don't want to remember them for example just, you decide on a learning task that you want to perform you design that task and then you do that task before and after sleep so for example let's say we are concerned with um, enhancing and strengthening our spatial memory so you would for example have a task that consists of you seeing some images um, with with their sounds so for, for example an image of a baby with a, with a baby crying like with the sound of a cry right and then you see those images displayed to you on a screen or in a computer or whatever the thing that you're using and in different locations and you should try to memorize the locations of those games and then you go to sleep basically it's a typical nap that were um last for like around 90 minutes and then during your sleep once you go into that specific stage that we are interested in which is your deep sleep stage we start playing those sounds that you listen to while doing the learning task the idea is that you're not going to play them all because you want to see how you want to see this you want to be able to see this difference right between the ones that were cute and the ones that were not so you can for example 
choose to play half of them. So you can have play half of the sounds that you listen to during um, the learning tasks that you were doing before sleep. Cue those sounds while you're sleeping. And then when you wake up, you redo the task again. Basically, you just play the game again. And then you should hopefully see a difference um, in your performance for the images that were cued um, during your sleep and the ones that were not. And you should perform better on the ones that were because basically that's what TMR was doing right during your sleep is what it was it hand enhancing this reactivation and reconsolidation of those memories for those specific images this is called the spiker shield and it's basically a, a device that allows you to measure your um, your EEG or your EKG your EEG is basically just looking at your brain waves when you are sleeping so we connect this device this very simple device to our computer and then you wear um, a headband and then we connect your headband to this device using three wires and then when you do that we can start seeing your brain waves in real time displayed on the computer and then we can start seeing what stage of sleep you are in and what we're interested in is slow wave sleep and that's when we start seeing what is called delta waves and those are slow waves that typically are you can see them on the screen they are large and they are like kind of tall and that's when you know when to start queuing during sleep so instead of using the big EEG setup that you would see in a lab we use the spiker shield um, and three wires and a headband which is very much um, simpler and you can do that in your house we have been able to basically transform whatever we saw in the in the scientific research papers right and and make it like kind of a DIY version and take it down and make it much more easier much more fun and much more accessible with our minds significantly expanded we said our goodbyes to Jude and returned to Princeton with a better sense of the many intricacies of TMR but something still felt missing left unanswered something we had set out for. So, when will I be able to memorize the dictionary? Curious about the capabilities of TMR, we decided to consult a leading authority on the subject, who we found right at home in Princeton University's Institute of Neuroscience. Uh, so this is the EEG room, um, and so we have computers in here that deliver stimulators. They used to do TMR studies. Um, there were a whole slew of them in the 80s that showed you could improve, you know, certain things like uh, like a creativity task and then a couple simple memory tasks. But nobody really knew what to do with that because it hadn't been studied on like the cellular level that like memories actually get replayed. The TMR specifically like really blew up in 2007, 2008 um, when like a big paper on like odor. Um, and reactivating memories came out. But since then, there's been a lot of studies showing this and that about how it works, what the limitations are. One of the previous studies that I had done before uh, coming to Princeton, we had people learning skill memories. Um, so they were playing out a sequence on a screen that, act that was actually very similar to Guitar Hero. And they were playing two different melodies. Then during sleep, we cued one of the two melodies and we saw that they were better at that one than the other one. So TMR seems to have applications beyond these declared or knowledge-based things and move into the, uh, the skill domain. So if we're talking about in an educational setting, things like new language learning, you just have to drill in all these new associations, right? For that sort of thing, from what we know about TMR so far, that should really work. Anything more complex, it's really not super clear whether you can reinforce someone's in, uh, knowledge of like you know, I just read Moby Dick. Can you like play back the audio to that and like help reinforce my memory of it? It's really not clear whether that would really work. You could make memory worse, you could make it better. Probably nothing would really happen because um, the way that it's stored might not be conducive to simply playing these little sounds and like it, having this integration happen in the brain. Or that you, there's a negative consequence with like just we're not supposed to remember everything, natural forgetting is the best way, or that like maybe by reinforcing things every night we're always excluding other things that then get hurt or something, right? In terms of like down the road, I mean, I, I think there could be, if things are really worked out precisely, um, if you do a lot of studies like working out the exact mechanisms of how this works, like in terms of timing with some of the events that happen during sleep, I mentioned sleep spindles, there's also slow oscillations, and then very few people are actually working in REM sleep, which is another stage of sleep that's when we most frequently dream. That is sort of an untapped uh, time period that not many people have actually investigated that much. 
So if, you know, if there's some sort of like super automated system that, that follows the physiology and like gives cues at the right time, if we know the consequences of that, like with like a bunch of big studies, it's possible given that sleep seems to be doing something restorative um, and it's needed, it's possible you could accelerate um, the good things about sleep and you wouldn't need as much. Let's say you could really work in using like sounds or whatever other technology, you could work in all the things you need into like three hours instead of eight, right? Then you'd have more time in a day to do other things. So there you have it. We're looking at a bridge in a field with a ton of possibilities. Today, Sleep and Memory Labs are using TMR to test theories and models that we've had about the brain for decades, but there's still a lot to learn about its potential applications and side effects. In the meantime, others such as those at Backyard Brains are trying to bring TMR into the commercial market, developing programmable TMR setups that might just one day make it into your home. And while you're probably not going to be seeing people walking around with cybernetic implants anytime soon, there's no telling what the next few years are going to bring. Hey, you made it. Did you bring the movie? Yeah, of course I did. You got me in or not? <laughs>